there is an enormous stockpile of wealth hidden away by the richest country in the world. Within a U.S. government fortress of concrete, steel, and granite lies a hoard of gold. It was melted, molded, and counted, and then sequestered in secrecy. It seems secure. To plunder it would mean taking on the most deadly heavy armor infantry in the world. Still, some question whether might and mystery are enough to protect this citadel of gold called Fort Knox. Here at the U.S. Bullion Depository at Fort Knox lies an essential key to America's financial power. Over $56 billion of pure gold bullion, more than half the world's gold supply. In times of worldwide economic instability, the depository's reputation for security may be more valuable than the gold itself. If that security is threatened, the United States government calls in the cavalry. With millions of ounces of gold at stake, they call the mechanized cavalry, over 10,000 soldiers. And they don't come blowing a bugle anymore. Behind the big guns and armor plate, behind the sharpshooters, barbed wire, and high-tech surveillance systems, is one of the most mysterious buildings in the United States. The U.S. Bullion Depository, a public structure hidden from public scrutiny. I suspect Fort Knox is the safest place in the United States. It's protected by the best armored division in the world, and I don't know of any place that's cloaked in more mystery. Fort Knox looms in the public consciousness as a symbol of financial integrity. To protect this symbol, Fort Knox maintains airtight secrecy. No one but Treasury employees can even get inside the grounds. This ensures the security of our gold reserves, as well as the confidence of our citizens. But secrecy gives rise to rumors, and trying to shed light on them can be frustrating. First bite coming up, where I take this guy? Chuck, how we doing? I need to get out the door. Seven That's more minutes, seven minutes. I'll be there, seven minutes. I don't minutes. have seven minutes. I got to get in the door. Cameras minutes. have been in the bowels of missile sites in Russia. We can go into the White House. We can go to the bottom of the ocean. They've even let cameras inside the CIA. And yet you can't get into the gold vault, not even into the lobby. And of course, that just adds to the mystique, the myth. And maybe they like it that way. You'll have it in four minutes, I promise. promise. Working in nearby Louisville, Kentucky, reporter Chuck Olmsted, like many, is intrigued by the vault. How long does it go? To hold a bar of gold, what's it weigh? Does it really shine? Has it been tarnished all these years sitting in that vault? Have they had to use some of it and not told us? I mean, it's natural questions. Yeah, I'd like to be inside. I'd like to stand around and look at what has been one of the, the biggest examples of American economic power and security. Please, please, please. 129, 24. 129, yes, yes. <laughs> Slap me five, baby. <laughs> All right, it's done. You did yeah, it. she takes it. Yeah. Yeah. When Olmsted set out to produce an investigative report on the bullion depository, he discovered that freedom of the press only went so far before it hit a wall of gold bricks. We were there for maybe 30 seconds. You could see the sharpshooters on the wall. Up comes the MPs. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. Your orders are not to allow us not to, to stand here. You're on post to film. Uh, if you want to film, go on post. You know, it's pretty, pretty frustrating when you're a news operation, but yet you got to leave. 
In fact, you can leave while the tourist is still standing five feet away from you, still taking pictures. Figure that out. And on one cold day in January, Olmstead did manage to find out a few things about the gold vault. Well, the first thing you see, of course, is the barricades. Next thing you notice is that granite. When they say it is virtually bombproof in conventional bombs, I believe that. The other thing you see, of course, are those eyes, those binoculars standing in the corners. They're not ornaments. Uh, they pick people who are sharpshooters. Once those binoculars go up to you, they never leave until you leave. The secrecy surrounding the nation's biggest gold reserve has often been the source of rumor and distortion. Films like Goldfinger have permanently distorted public perception of the vault's interior. But the film's crew was never allowed in the building. Their version of the inside of the Bullion Depository is pure fiction, another tall tale which only furthers the mysterious image of Fort Knox. In the politically turbulent 70s, illegal covert actions and conspiracy theories were coming to light on a daily basis. A rumor surfaced that America's gold reserves no longer existed. This assault on the integrity of American economic power brought swift action. The Treasury Department made the unprecedented decision to open the vault to some of the public. Seven members of Congress, surrounded by local and national journalists, arrived to see the world's largest collection of gold. Michael Brown, former press secretary for the Mint, is intimately familiar with the interior of the Bullion Depository. When you go in Fort Knox, it's not what you expect to see. It's not what you see in the movie Goldfinger. It's like an old Wall Street bank, frankly, uh, 1930s kind of bank. You kind of feel a little bit like you step back in time. The United States moved gold out of here, did they not? Though the depository may be less dazzling than what's in the movies, the vault opening was more exclusive and electrifying than a Hollywood premiere. Are you ready? Yes, we're ready. No one person has the entire combination to the vault. You have to stand back, gentlemen, please. So we can get it's a big thing. As the 20-ton door finally swung open, there were no gasps of awe from the VIP visitors. Only another gate and another sealed door. Could the rumors be true? Was this a charade? It's the first time since they moved that goal out of here in 68. That's right. That's the first time this door. We're cutting the ribbon. The Treasury Department did open the doors and let a select group go in to prove that there's hundreds and hundreds of bars of gold. This door too. Sure enough, the gold was there, as it had been since 1936. Are you satisfied all the gold is here? Well, I am, and uh, I was before we came. The congressional visit, followed by an official audit, reassured the public that U.S. gold reserves were still intact. Most of the public. The other side is, uh, the rumors are a few days afterwards, there were trucks, 18 wheelers in the back of Fort Knox. After the show and tell, the vault door was slammed shut, sealed off from prying eyes. Once again, America's gold is locked away in a dungeon of secrecy. The Treasury Department maintains that regular audits confirm every ounce of gold is present and accounted for. But rumors persist. Has gold been smuggled out, sold off? Certainly, I don't think the United States government would spend that kind of money on an empty building, but. Uh... The presence of gold in the gold depository, I cannot confirm or deny. Best Western, go vault in. Doug Simmons was a high school student in 1975 when he received a mysterious phone call. A man called and asked me if I would like a job. I told him that I would and uh, asked him what the job would be, and he told me, I can't tell you. And uh, that kind of shocked me. Each year when they did the annual audit, the, the gold has to be moved in and out of the, the smaller vault so they can count all the bars. And, you know, each one of those bars weighs 27 pounds. We used to get some of the guys who played in the local high school football team, some of the bigger guys, to come in, and they would uh, help move the gold around. How many nights? How many Simmons years? joined the ranks of a select few, outsiders who have worked inside the vault. 
I was a bullion stack man for many years. The Gold Vault ran audits. I was responsible for stacking and storing their holdings. You find out very quickly that the glamour wears off in about 30 seconds. Uh, it's extremely heavy, it's extremely dirty. Uh, you wear gloves, uh, and if you're not safe every moment you're working with it, you can get extremely hurt. Uh, bar landing on someone's hand can break every bone in their hand. Why Simmons was selected was just as mysterious as the security surrounding the vault. To this day, I do not know why they picked my name, where they got my name. Uh, I have no knowledge of that at all. I know that they did a full security background, not only on myself, but on my family. The secrecy factor was always there. You couldn't talk about what you saw or what you did. And that was hard when I was 18. You know, you got all your friends asking you questions, and you couldn't tell them. Your girlfriend's asking you questions. You can't tell her. We were instant celebrities, you know, everybody wanted to know what we knew, and of course, by us telling them we wouldn't tell them, that just made us bigger stars. Tell or not, they were the last outsiders who would actually see the gold. Since 1989, only full-time credentialed Treasury Department employees are allowed in or out of the facility. Rumors about nighttime shipments and hush-hush deals to sell off the gold grow in direct proportion to the heightened secrecy and fortress-like security. The government insists that security at Fort Knox has never been penetrated, but local legend paints a different picture. A boy supposedly came in through a sewer system and found himself standing in the middle of one of the compartments in the bottom of the depository. Totally ridiculous, of course, but it is a story that has circulated for years, and people will tell you with all the authority in the world that it's true. There's tons of this stuff, you know, uh, drunks climbing over fences. It's part of the legend. The greater the secrecy, the taller the tales. Or are they just tall tales? I've heard uh, that they could flood the vault with thousands of gallons of water. I've heard that they can flood the various chambers that hold gold with gas. A floor suspended in midair, things about pop-up machine guns. I think that's all part of the myth, the lore. When I was a kid, I'd come down from the vault and, you know, tourists would meet us at the end of the road and, of course, they would inevitably ask all these questions about, you know, what's that? Is that a machine gun or that I see there? That type of thing. And on that occasion, we had a tractor running around the vault cutting the grass. One of the tourists asked me, he said, uh, how does he keep from being blown up? You know, the minefield. And we just looked at him in all seriousness and told him he carries a map. And I thought, wow, that must be very dangerous. And I told him, yeah, that's the third maintenance man we've had in a year. <laughs> Believe what you want to. The legend is more fun than maybe the fact. Why give an enemy, real or perceived, an itch? If they think there are mines surrounding the gold vault, if they think there are pop-up machine guns built into the lawn, they'd be a fool to come up and say, no, there isn't. I don't think there are pop-up machine guns. But, hey. Why not have people believe it? The truth is, greater security is not an overreaction by a paranoid government. Not in this age of random terrorism. People that want to steal, that's not the concern anymore. Because, I mean, realistically, you want to try stealing millions of dollars in gold bullion, you better have yourself one hell of an operation to do it. This stuff is extremely heavy, and getting it out of there is not going to be easy. The kind of guys that you worry about now, they're not interested in stealing anything. They're interested in a statement. They want to kill people and blow up a building so they can look important. I think they worry about a scenario where somebody would pull up with a van and a vial of plutonium, blow it up, and contaminate the whole area for decades. That sounds a little bit like the Goldfinger scenario. And if you can contaminate 
the single most important example of American economic power. Imagine the impact it would have. The scenario of terrorism, Oklahoma City, World Trade Center. These are things that 10 years ago you couldn't imagine happening. Now it doesn't seem so far-fetched that the gold ball could be another target. How could you consider yourself safe anymore when Fort Knox is that vulnerable? You know, there is no safety. And that's what terrorism is all about. Security at the Gold Vault is probably much, much more than it was in those days. But the world has changed a great deal since 1975. For one thing, the value of money no longer depends on gold. But gold is still a solid asset in a shaky global economy. Dollars, Deutschmarks may burn up, disappear, but the gold, you can go anywhere in the world and they recognize it. And I think they, they worry about that image. But do the people who guard the vault really have anything to worry about? We also ask them, has anybody ever tried to actually break in? They say the answer is no. That's logical in one way. It's placed there on a military reservation where they can call in 10,000 troops, helicopter gunships in a matter of minutes. You'd be a fool to try to break in. The main line of defense at the vault is a specially trained federal police force, the Mint Police. They're backed up by the Army. They do.